Peppers are a diverse and important vegetable that can be found in cuisines around the world. While most peppers are valued for their spicy, pungent flavor, some can be sweet and even fruity. Peppers can be green, yellow, orange, red, and purple, and can be decorative as much as delicious. In sizes both large and small, they come in round, oval, tapered, curly, and sometimes bizarre shapes. The techniques that can be used to breed peppers with traits you desire are simple and can be applied on both a small and large scale. Peppers belong to the family Solanaceae, along with tomatoes, potatoes, and eggplants. The pepper genus is called Capsicum, which contains about 27 species. They are all diploid, and while some wild species have 13 pairs of chromosomes, most have 12 pairs of chromosomes. They originated in Central and South America in the tropics and were domesticated many times. Although peppers are grown as annuals, most are actually perennial plants, and some species can live as long as 30 years. Five species make up the common peppers that people grow and enjoy. Capsicum annuum is the most important and commonly grown species and is from Central America. It includes sweet, bell, and banana peppers, jalapenos, pimentos, cayenne, and paprika. Capsicum chinense, so named because it was originally thought to be from China, is actually from Central America. This species is where we find the spicy habanero pepper and the Jamaican scotch bonnet. Capsicum frutescence, which originated in Central and Northwestern South America, includes the Tabasco pepper and the bird's eye chili, also known as Thai hot peppers. Capsicum bicatum, known as the ahi pepper, is from Central South America. It has a distinct fruity flavor and can also be very hot. It also includes the lemon drop pepper, picante, and the oddly shaped bishop's crown. Capsicum pubescence is a hairy leafed species from Central America and Peru. Although it is the earliest known domesticated pepper, it is less widespread than the other peppers today. It includes the rocoto, chili manzana, and canario peppers. Species in the capsicum genus have a complex array of interrelationships which determine which species can be crossed with each other. The cultivated capsicum species are organized into three main groups called complexes to organize this information and help breeders determine what interspecific crosses are possible. Capsicum annuum, chinense, and frutescence, and the wild species capsicum galapagoense are in the annuum complex. Capsicum bicatum and the wild capsicum toverii and pretermisum make up the bicatum complex. Capsicum pubescence and wild capsicum eximium and cardensii together form the eximium complex. There are other groupings of wild capsicum species, but their relationships are less well understood. Some species such as capsicum chacoense are considered intermediate between different complexes. Breeding within a species complex is usually simple, but between each complex is difficult. To move genes between species in different complexes, breeders can use rare bridge species, such as Capsicum flexuosum and Capsicum parvifolium. Pepper species are monoclinous because the flowers are bisexual or perfect, with both male and female organs. Pepper flowers have a corolla made up of five or six petals fused together at the base, and a green calyx that may have spiny, reduced sepals. The stamens which hold the pollen-producing anthers are epipetalous, meaning that they grow off of the petals. There are five or six stamens around the female pistil which contains the ovary and has a stigma to receive the pollen. Although referred to as a vegetable, the pepper is technically a fruit, because the part that we eat develops from the ovary and contains seeds. In the wild and on the farm, peppers are cross-pollinated by insects, and the flowers can also self-pollinate. Growing your plants in a greenhouse can minimize accidental pollination and help you control your crosses. To make controlled crosses with peppers, you only need a few pieces of equipment. A pair of forceps will be necessary to perform the pollination, as well as tags and a permanent marker to label your crosses. 
A knife and a paper towel or newspaper is all that you will need to harvest your seeds. If you plan to store pollen in the long term, you will need small snap cap tubes or gel caps and a container of desiccant. If you are working with hot peppers, gloves and goggles will protect you during harvesting. To maintain the integrity of your crosses, you should also clean your tools and hands with ethanol between each cross. Latex gloves can also help prevent cross contamination. Pollinations are best done early in the morning when pollen is being produced. To start your cross, first you must select a young female flower that will bear a good fruit. Pepper flowers grow from the nodes of the stems where branches form. The first two tiers of flowers near the bottom of the plant will provide the best quality fruit with the most seeds. Select a flower that has not yet opened and carefully tear open the petals with your forceps. Next, emasculate by gently removing the anthers from the flower. By removing the anthers before they open, it will prevent self-pollination. For the male parent, select a newly opened flower that is producing pollen. Remove it from the plant and tear off the petals with your forceps. With your male flower, gently brush the stigma of the female flower to coat it with pollen. Pollen can also be scraped off and applied with your forceps and can be saved in a snap cap tube for the future. At zero degrees Celsius, pollen can last five to six days, but this can be extended to six months if they are kept dry with a desiccant. Finally, label your cross with the parents and the date. Remember to write the female parent first. Harvesting seeds is very easy. When peppers are mature, they change color and can be removed from the plants. With your knife, cut off the bottom of the fruit to open up the hollow seed chamber and cut or tear the rest away. With your hands, gently rub the seeds off of the fruit and onto the paper towel to dry. If you are working with hot peppers, be sure to wear gloves. When the seeds are dry, collect them in a labeled bag to plant the next generation. This simple process can be done on a large scale to produce thousands of seeds. For hybrid seed production, breeders may use peppers that are male sterile, preventing the need to emasculate the female flowers. The male and female plants can be grown adjacent to each other in isolated fields to produce enough hybrid seeds for farmers to plant. One of the most important traits of a pepper is its spiciness or pungency. This hot flavor is mainly caused by a molecule called capsaicin, part of a group of related pungent compounds called capsaicinoids. Pungency is measured in Scoville units, which refer to the degree it must be diluted for someone to not be able to taste the spice anymore. Today it is measured with more advanced techniques like high-performance liquid chromatography, which measures the total capsaicinoid content. Sweet peppers start at a Scoville rating of around zero, while mild peppercinis will be one to 500, jalapenos are in the thousands, and hot peppers such as the bird's eye chilies and habaneros can have around 100,000 units. This trait can be changed through breeding. One of the hottest peppers in the world, the Naga Jalokia pepper, which has a Scoville rating of up to 1 million, is a hybrid between the Capsicum chinense and Frutescent species. Conversely, breeders have been able to achieve varieties of hot peppers such as jalapenos that have no pungency at all for people who are sensitive to spice. There's a lot of room in Capsicum species for new and interesting combinations, enough to delight any breeder and eater of peppers. Thank you.